if you have a question during the show, we want to hear it. Your input is a big part of what makes the show great, and we thrive on your energy and insights. Whether it's a quick comment, a thoughtful question, or an opinion, we just have to share. Don't hesitate to drop it in the chat. Now, if you want to make absolutely sure your message stands out and gets featured on the show, there's an easier way to do that. Use the Super Chat feature. Just click the dollar sign at the bottom of the chat box. Send in your Super Chat. This guarantees that your message gets on the air. And it's also a fantastic way to support our channel. We rely on your support to keep bringing you the sports content you love. And we appreciate every bit of it. So get ahead and let us know what you're thinking. Hit that Super Chat button and let's keep this show as interactive and exciting as possible. And if you prefer, you can also go to the gsmcpodcast.net to tip, donate, and leave a comment or question there. We couldn't do what we do without your amazing support. And we're so thankful to have you as part of our community. We have to start off though. With Cristiano Ronaldo scoring once again for Portugal. This is now his 901th official goal. Um, and scoring for Portugal to get that victory over Scotland. He came off the bench and do it. They were down 1-0 early to Scotland. Uh, Scott McTominay was able to get them the lead. Scotland sort of playing in... Desperation, not desperation for this game, but you know, was a need to get a result in this. Their opening day disappointing loss at Hamden Park to um to Poland. They lost to them three to two. So you know, in the Nations League, having six games, playing six games, you know, every game is vital. And after starting off already with the loss at home, you need to be able, you need to get some sort of result. And they, they, you know, they they were in it till the end. But then Cristiano Ronaldo was able, well, Bruno Fernandes equalized. And then Cristiano Ronaldo was able to struck that late winner, tap it in into an empty net. And, uh, and from a goal down, they go on to beat Scotland 2-1. And they continue their good start so far to the Nations League. You remember we talked about this when Ronaldo scored his 900th goal um, we didn't discuss much about the game, but it came in a 2-1 win for Portugal. They were able to get that win over Croatia in a game that they, that for periods, they did struggle against Croatia. And Croatia did play really, really well. We know Croatia with um, Zlatko, Dalic are now going with a different approach with the, with the back three, which sort of fits Sutelo, Guardiol, and the... the the caliber of players that Croatia have, um, they went on to use that same sort of formation as they defeated Poland 1-0, and they actually played really well in that game as well. But um, going back to uh, Portugal, they came off the, um, they have, have, they've had a strong start so far. Bruno Fernandes, um, I talked about how he was able to fire in the equalizer, Ronaldo also. Scotland, um, you know, they were kind of hanging on there at the end. Um, but uh, Bruno Fernandes, he played a 600 career game, said, um, said, speaking about Ronaldo, said the influence is always the same, regardless of whether he starts on the bench or not. Everyone who came on made the difference Cristiano has a goal today he scored 901 and now he's on his way to a thousand which is what he wants Portugal they lead group A now with six points in Scotland um I t- you know we discussed about them having two losses both came both came to late goals which is really a frustrating sort of international window losing two games with late goals frustrating for Steve Clark and the boys Portugal, uh, you know, Angus, Angus Gunn, he made a lot of saves. And the one that he saved, the Rafael Leao's low sort of strike, was an amazing save. And uh, Portugal, they had 15 attempts at halftime. Uh, but Scotland, they were able to dig deep in there and sort of defend for their lives. And Angus Gunn made a, made a lot of saves. Eventually, though, 
um, he was beaten uh, as uh, the play gets pulled back to Fernandez, who hits a well-timed shot. Um, but to be honest, Inga's gun made a lot of good saves, but that one could have probably been saved. Uh, and then Portugal, um, they had their opportunities. Gun made a lot of good saves. Inga's gun, but eventually Ronaldo. Uh, oh, and Ronaldo actually had another opportunity where he headed and it hit the post. Um, and then Ronaldo uh, eventually got the tap in with a great delivery by Nuno Mendes. And uh, yeah, um, Steve Clark, when discussing it, said. Steve Clark, Scotland manager, obviously disappointed. I looked for a long period that we get something from the game. The effort and the quality the players put in, they deserve to get something. Uh, yeah, look, the game itself, you know, you know, uh, what I, you know, everything that I said up to this point kind of speaks for itself. The game, you know, Scotland hanging on, just couldn't hang on to the end. Ronaldo getting that goal. Uh, look, Cristiano Ronaldo is a great player. Cristiano Ronaldo has been a great player, has had a great career. 901 goals is not something to be understated. Um, and, um, you know, last segment, I tried to... You know, I made it complete, mostly completely positive regarding Ronaldo because, well, it's it, it's needed to celebrate this sort of a ch- accomplishment. It is an amazing achievement getting 900 official goals. Now and 901. And can, at this age, still being able to score winners for your country. You know, it says a lot. But we've seen the story before. We've seen this story before um, with Cristiano Ronaldo in the lead up to this European Championship, this European Championships in this past summer. Um, in the qualifiers, Ronaldo in the in the European qualifiers in the lead up, Ronaldo was the leading scorer for Portugal. Ronaldo, I believe, um, I don't have the exact statistics uh, I'll put that up there but Ronaldo had a really good run in the qualifiers in the Nations League in the lead up for uh, up to that European Championship um, and then yeah it's, um, I thought uh, originally I thought it was 10 but I wasn't for sure I just searched it up. It is. He scored 10 times in the nine qualifiers that he played in. He scored 10 times. So he had a great lead up. He had a great production in the European qualifiers leading up to that European Championship. And then we arrive at the European Championship and he he doesn't score. He doesn't get any goals. He's barely involved in play throughout the duration of the tournament. He was barely involved in play in general in terms of general play. Didn't have enough opportunities created for him, created for him. Didn't really take advantage of the few opportunities created for him, and really struggled to, you know, put a foot in the game and to really be part of the game. He just didn't get enough chances. He wasn't mobile enough. Didn't move around enough. Was limited to being a box striker, and he, it, just not what we expect of Cristiano Ronaldo, and. And it's like the same story, you know, in these sort of Nations League qualifier games going up against, uh, in the, you know, in the, in less intense moments. Because let's be for real, let's be 100%. The Nations League Euro qualifiers, even Scotland. Scotland is a team that qualified for the European Championship. This is a sort of, you know, a decent caliber game. But the intensity that teams play in these sort of games compared to a major international tournament is two completely different things. Getting a goal in the Nations League, you know, playing decent in the Nations League and playing, you know, for your country at an international tournament, leading the line, being the man is totally different. And for me, Cristiano Ronaldo is not capable of being that sort of guy at that level at a major tournament for Portugal, not anymore. It's been proven over and over again. Uh, 
the last two major inter international tournaments that Cristiano Ronaldo has played in, the last two, going back to the 2022 World Cup and these past European Championships, he didn't score a single goal from open play. No, not a single goal for open play. And he was the routine sort of, num you know, low number nine for Portugal game in and game out in those two tournaments. He did later on in that, uh, in that World Cup in the round of 16, get benched, um, and then uh, got benched. And then in the, in the Morocco, the quarterfinal, only played the second half, but got to play the duration of that group stages, got to play this entire European Championship, minute in, minute out, was always on the pitch, besides a 35-minute period in the last group stage game where he got subbed off in a game that didn't matter against... Um, against... Uh, Georgia, he got to play game in, game out, and not only he didn't get any goals, and not getting any goals is okay. That's not the thing I'm more, uh, uh, you know, because sometimes you just get unlucky. You can hit the post a few times, um, you, the keeper can make a few great saves, you know. Um, sometimes the opportunities are just not created for you. The goals thing is not the necessarily the problem. That is part of it. As a number nine, you are expected to score goals. But the biggest thing is he's barely involved in play. He's not pressing from, from front, which is okay. We, you know, he's older and all that. But on top of that, you don't really get the, you know, runs in behind the way he used to. He doesn't get involved in general play. He sort of drift, tries to find little pocket of spaces between the center halves to, you know, be able to get a header off. Doesn't really, you know, you know, doesn't really have the movements that he has of the past. Can't really get on the ball and attack the defender with pace um, the way he used to. He's just not the same player, and he's been resulted to a box striker that doesn't, that, that's, that's just not, you know, in the right areas at the right time. Just can't get his foot into the game. And you go, you go, you, you watch Portugal games, and you, you, you almost forget that Cristiano Ronaldo is playing. And, and now with the next World Cup coming, he's only going to get older. He's going to be 41 at that World Cup. Right now, the past two international tournaments does, has not been involved enough, hasn't been his self in the major tournaments for Portugal. Now with that World Cup coming up, you know, he's only going to get worse from here. You know, he's 39 years old. He's going on to 41 for that World Cup. He's only going to get worse from there. Then on top of that, with the sort of personality he has, and uh, and the character, he's not someone that's willing to come off the bench. Um, he that's not you know that's not his persona. That's not what he wants to do. You saw, you know, there was some issues. He you know, at the last World Cup, um, that was reported. We saw the way how he sort of, you know. You know his reaction to getting subbed off to Georgia in a meaningless game in that last group stage game, getting subbed out in the 64th, 65th minute by Roberto Martinez. We see it in the comments that he makes on how he's confident that he is uh, still able to lead the line in Portugal. So, yeah, um, look, it's good that he's able to get the winner over, over Scotland and all that, but the story remains the same with Cristiano Ronaldo on Portugal. It's just, it's a page that needs to be closed, and there's two things that need to happen. Either he just needs, you know, you know, he just needs to realize this, you know, the story is done, or he needs to be willing to accept a more limited role on Portugal. Because I don't think he's a player that's, you know, you know, garbage or anything. Like that. No, far from that. But it's the fact that he's not willing to accept the limited role. That is the issue as well. That is a major, major issue. And that is why for me and for a lot of people that are looking at this from an objective point of view, the only real solution here is for them to close the chapter on the story of Cristiano Ronaldo's time at Portugal. But um, thank you guys um, for sort of listening to my diatribe. <laughs>